Hey everyone, it's Gary here from Echidna Sewing, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Juki M0104 and 114 overlockers. So Juki, it's a name that I'm very familiar with, and um, if you've uh, ever been in the industrial sewing market, you'll also be very, very familiar with the Juki name. Uh, they are the, the leading industrial machine sewing machine manufacturer in the world, but they've been making domestic overlockers and domestic machines for many, many, many years. And Juki, of course, is a brand that goes right back to the late 1940s. So they've been around for a long time and and boy, they're, uh, they're gaining some presence in Australia. So um, really happy to be selling the Juki products. And today, these two overlockers that we're going to look at are really um, a testament to just what you get from Juki. They're very, very robust, simple, and, and workhorse type machines that you'd expect from a brand like Juki, of course. So Juki MO104 and 114D overlockers. So they look exactly the same, don't they? And pretty much they are. So what I'm going to do today is actually demonstrate and uh, show you all about the, um, all the fabulous features on the 114DN. Uh, and before I do that, I'm going to point out to you the differences between the two models. Because physically, uh, from a size, from a way they stitch, from um, the way they're built, they're exactly the same, except for three basic functions. So let's just go through those now. The first one is on the 114, which is the slightly more expensive machine and certainly the most popular machine, it has the stitch length and differential feed adjustments on the side of the machine right here. Really easy to get to, just simply turn them and you can make your adjustments. Compar comparing to the 104, the differential feed adjustment is on the side of the machine here. So that's the differential feed adjustment. And the stitch length adjustment, you do need to open this little cover up and then undo this nut right here and then move that to adjust to whatever stitch length you're wanting the machine to be set at. You'll get ultimately the same settings, but it's just a little bit more difficult on this machine as opposed to the 114D. Uh, the only other main difference is that this, the 104, if, if you had an overlocker many, many years ago, you'll remember that threading that jolly lower looper was a bit of a task. So you had to open the machine up and you had to thread through here, then poke the thread through and then turn your wheel so as the looper was on the correct side on the left hand side of the machine and pop the thread through the looper and then pull it back and then pop the thread through the looper eye here. So, so that's the old style, the, the old way of threading overlockers that really was the only way for many, many, many years until they started to get automatic threading and, and, and different devices that made it a whole lot easier. So 104 has the old style threading. And just close that back up again. The 114D has the lower looper threader, which is magic. So it's just a little gadget that pulls the looper down and allows you to easily thread that. Now, I'm not going to go through on this video and show you how to thread the machine because Juki do an amazing job at producing very detailed videos on every aspect of their machine. So on our website, on these products, you will see videos, really beautifully made videos showing exactly how to thread this and how simple it is. So that lower looper threader is a big advantage on this model as opposed to that model. So that's probably why it makes it so much more popular than this one. So even though you pay a little bit more, it's, it's certainly a, a, a benefit that you would want to have. There's one other little feature that this has and it, it is available with a, or comes with a, what we call a, um, a little looper spreader. And again, um, there is a video showing this, but essentially it allows you to turn uh, a three thread overlocker into a two thread overlocker. And that's quite useful when you're just doing lots of over edging where you've got no seam strength required. And um, yeah, probably not used as much as it could be, but um, it, it saves you thread if you're just doing simple over edging and um, neatening up lots and lots of uh, fabric. So that's the only differences, guys. The rest of the machine, physically, they're the same. They, they stitch the same way. They've got the same tensioning, same. The rest of the threading is all the same. And obviously, the quality is superb on both models because it is a Juki after all. So 
With that said, let's now talk about some of the key features on these overlockers. Okay, so here we are. I've moved the uh, 104 model just out the way for the time being so we can um, uh, go through the, the 114. And I will point out again, if I'm talking about a feature that is not on the 104, I will point that out during this video. But let's have a look at the, uh, the physicality of the machine because a lot of people when they're buying a sewing machine or an overlocker, they ask some um, reasonably fair questions and, and one of the most common is, oh my goodness, it's, it feels plasticky. Well, I can assure you these things are anything but plastic when it comes to the structure of the machine. Now, the thing you will notice if you were to come and lift this machine, it's quite weighty um, and that is because there's a lot of metal. It's a full metal chassis, it's beautifully engineered and these days in everything you buy, um, the covers on a machine or whatever it is you're buying are typically going to be made from plastic because that helps keep the weight reasonably light and makes it more um, or easy to sort of tote around. But it just makes sense. Um, there's no point having metal covers on a machine. It just makes no sense at all. Um, so you'll see that it's a, it's a beautiful looking machine and your threading is just like any other overlocker. Your threads all go at the back. You've got your telescopic thread spool just here. And um, this one, this particular model or these models have a lay-in thread system. So that means as you pull the thread down, it lays into the tension. You don't have to wrap it around the tension dial, which can often be missed or done incorrectly. So I think the lay-in threading on an overlocker is an advantage. It also has what we call a tension release. So when we lift the presser foot, and that's a little tip guys for, for all of you. So whether you're on a sewing machine or an overlocker, you should always thread your machine with the presser foot in the up position. So in other words, the foot on the machine right here, it should be up because on most machines, not all, some still don't do this, but they certainly do on this one. On most machines, when you lift the foot, the tension mechanism actually opens up and that allows for the thread to be pulled into the tension system so as you're going to get the correct tension or stitch when you start sewing. So always thread with the presser foot up. Um, the slide tension dials are really simple. Again, uh, one of the things people often say is, oh my goodness, I'm so scared of tension. I never want to touch it because I just don't understand it. Well, it's not it's not rocket science. And, and in, in fact, on these models, you'll see that there's a, there's a sort of a grade area, three to five on the tension dial. And to be perfectly honest, as long as your tension um, slides are somewhere in that gray area, the machine's going to work reasonably well. Um, you'll find straight out of the box, this will go four, 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 and four, and it's going to work perfectly. The variables of that sometimes will be the quality of the thread and that's the thing we can't control and I will assure you overlocking threads, some overlocking threads are the cheapest of cheap cheap threads you can possibly buy and they're just inconsistent and they, they're just horrid and you'll struggle to get a good stitch on them. Uh, having said that, these, these machines are quite accommodating um, but still I do recommend use a good quality overlocking thread. It will give you the best results and less frustration for yourself. So again on your tension dials you don't really need to touch these guys. It's just a matter of leaving them set on four for your basic overlocking and, um, and away you go. There's two needles on these overlockers because these are a three slash four thread overlocker in, in, in actual, actual fact this is a two three four thread overlocker whereas the um, 104 that I've got over the side here is a one is a um, three or a four thread. Now what does that actually mean? Typically for most home overlockers you're going to see it set up with two needles and four threads. The two needles will take the two spools on the left hand side of the machine and the loopers which are in the bottom of the machine here will take the two threads on the right hand side. And um, it forms what's called a mock safety stitch. And a, a mock safety stitch is a really strong stitch that you can use to seam, to construct, to edge. And you can use that on knit fabrics, woven fabrics. Um, and, and in actual fact, it's, it's so easy to construct a, a garment quickly and efficiently on an overlocker without having to run any other seam stitches on your sewing machine. Now, of course, if you're creating a piece of apparel that you want to last a long time and you want to be able to have that option to, um, to adjust or alter as we put on or, or lose some weight, um, then you may want to run a separate seam allowance or a seam stitch on your sewing machine. But if you're just making your, your knockabout everyday garment that you know is not going to last you forever, um, then construct it on an overlocker, you'll be fine. So that's, a, um, that's the benefit of a, a four thread machine is you've got extra seam strength in there. 
Let's have a look at what else we have. I did mention earlier, we've got our stitch length and differential feed dial. So obviously every machine has to be able to move your stitch length. And of course on this one, it is just a case of turning the dial to whatever stitch length you want. And differential feed, which I'm going to explain in a little bit um, more detail in a moment, is a simple adjustment on the side here. Uh, obviously your foot control plugs in on the side here. You've got your on off switch, um, nothing fancy there. That's pretty normal. And if we have a look around here, you've got um, your arm that opens here. And this, this allows you to adjust the cutting width on the machine. Now, some of the features that, one of the very key features that I like about this machine, because it is a very robust, um, heavy duty type machine and um, really designed to do some heavy work, is that while the stitch uh, width control is here, and I might move that and show you, as we move that, you'll see this cutting blade here actually moves in and out. Hopefully camera guys got that on screen. So this is your actual cutting blade and that determines the width of the fabric that you're cutting. And that will actually uh, be something you'll adjust from time to time, depending on what you're actually doing. The, um, the big thing about this machine is it has a top driven or top drive knife cutting system. And that means that this arm here is driven from the top. Unlike a lot of models where um, they have a pull down type knife system. Now they both have their benefits and advantages. Um, some people like the, the pull down type system because you don't have this mechanism up top. But this is what you would see on an industrial machine. You would definitely have a top drive uh, knife system and that means that it's a pretty powerful cutting system. The blade can also be very simply disengaged. So I'll do that again. Hopefully camera guy can see this. I just push that in and I can slide that out and um, move the blade right out so as it's totally disengaged. And you might use that if you were doing flat locking or, or some rolled hemming applications or anywhere where you don't want to cut the, the fabric. If you do choose to disengage the blade, you must be very careful that you don't run any fabric, any edge of the fabric to the right of the presser foot because you will you'll crash your machine. You don't want to do that. So, uh, And that applies to any overlocker, guys. So um, always make sure that you're very careful if you have disengaged the blade. I'm going to pop that back into position there. Other uh, little parts of this machine that um, are important to note is it has a built-in rolled hemming finger. So rolled hemming is a beautiful decorative stitch and of course we've got videos on that on our website um, so you can sort of check all that out at your leisure but the rolled hemming finger is just a matter of pulling that back and um, once you do that it's we adjust the tensions and I'm going to show you that in a minute on in the book where you can actually get that information but uh, by moving that little rolled hemming finger forward it means it's back into normal mode pulling it towards you or back from the machine means that it is now in a rolled hemming um, position. So we're going to leave that in the uh, the main position there. And we're going to close that up. Now I did mention the book. It does come with a, um, a really nice clear instruction book. And of course, these days instruction books are even less important because of all the video content that's available. And uh, again, I mentioned earlier, Juki do a fantastic job at producing very high quality, very detailed videos. And so there's no point us um, you know, we're reinventing the wheel. So those videos are all on the website. So please watch them and, and you'll get some great information and great training from that as well. But certainly in the book, I find this book is actually one of the better books I've seen. It's not too long. It's got very explicit um, instructions. So for instance, uh, if we were going to do a rolled hem, it tells me here, a three thread rolled hem, it tells you exactly where to set the tensions, the stitch length, cutting width, everything is there. It's really an easy reference point. And of course, all the other information that you might need is in there. And if that doesn't help you and you need some more advice, you just need to contact us and we will um, sort you out. Okay, so let's do a little bit of stitching on this guy. So I've got a couple of pieces of standard woven fabric here and we're just going to run this through and then have a look at the way the stitch forms. And um, the machine is all set ready to go. So I can just feed this fabric through, but a little tip sometimes depending on what fabric you're using, Sometimes it's easy just to lift that foot up a little bit and pop your fabric just under the front of the foot. And that just helps everything sort of take off a little bit better, particularly good if you've got a, um, a, a light knit or stretchy fabric that kind of just wants to push away a bit. So let's just run this through and then have a listen to this, uh, this lovely sound of it. It won't come across as well on camera as it does here because um, they're just so whisper, whisper quiet for an overlocker and so solid. And in fact, when people come and, and sit um, and look at the different overlockers in our showroom, Often all we need to do is say, you know, just sew on this one and just tell me what you think. And it's a real, it's a real winner from that sort of solidness point of view. So let's just run this through. 
Now when it comes through at the end there, you, overlockers are designed to continue to chain out. And so if we just keep running, it will just keep stitching and it'll just keep chaining out. Now, a lot of people um, do just continually chain out all the time. And, and I will tell you as a mechanic that the more you run the machine without fabric under the foot, um, the more wear you're putting on the feeders and the sole plate of the foot. So, you know, don't do it all the time. You don't need to really, but I'm quite happy and I've always done this to run my fabric around and then just cut my thread off under the foot like that. And um, it's, a, it's a really neat way to, uh, to trim the thread. So you can see there, there's a perfect four thread, three four thread mock safety stitch. We can see if camera guy's got this on, on shot, hopefully he has. We've got um, a needle thread down the center there and a needle thread on the left hand side. And that's the upper looper thread that you can see coming across like this. And this will be the lower looper thread on the bottom there. And that's how it's formed. That's a perfectly balanced stitch. And um, again, these are all set on four. Now I'm going to show you something really quick. If, if I was to, you know, inadvertently knock something out of position, say I moved the lower looper up to seven and, and the upper looper was down to three, have a look at what's going to happen. So we'll just run a bit of stitching through. Now you can see, camera guy hopefully can see that, it's a really unbalanced stitch, it's not very good. So the minute I take it back to four and four, it will be perfect. So I guess the thing I'd like to say there is, there we go, we're back to a perfect stitch again, absolutely spot on, is if as long as you're in that gray scale, you're gonna be fine. Don't, don't be fearful of tensions. It's not rocket science and um, our, our videos explain all that as well. So now we've now got a four thread stitch and this is two pieces of fabric. And when we open that out, now bear in mind, I'm using purple on white. So you would expect to see a little bit of that stitch, but that's quite strong. And if, if I tried to break that seam, I can't break it. You know, look, I've just ruined it, but well, if it was white, you wouldn't see that, but it's a strong seam. That's the point I'm making. And um, you'll you'll find that, you know, constructing garments, it's it's ideal for constructing garments, absolutely. So, so that's a four thread overlocker using on a standard woven fabric. Now let's have a look at something different here. We've got a bit of fleecy and um, overlockers are just built to do um, polar fleece and fleecy fabrics and sweatshirts and hoodies and that sort of thing. So we'll just run these two pieces down here or this one piece, I'll just fold it over and we'll have a look at the type of seam we get. And um, again, there's my two raw edges. So again, this is a bit thicker. So while the machine will kind of drag that in for you, it's just a little bit easier just to lift that foot and just pop it under there and just start sewing. And it handles that with ease. Probably a bit hard to see the purple on the gray, but it's a perfect stitch. It's beautifully balanced. It's a lovely seam. It's going to, it's going to give you some stretch with the fabric too, because an overlocking stitch actually by nature is a stretch stitch because it's not a lock stitch. It's actually a form of a chain stitch. It does have some give in it. So that's why they're so amazingly good on knit fabrics. So handles fleecy in a, in a heartbeat. Here we have a two-way stretch. Now this is it's kind of like a lycra. And if we were going to seam two pieces of that together, let's see how we go there. Now this is quite delicate and light. So again, I still think it's a good idea just to pop the foot over the fabric like so. And we'll just run that down there. And notice that I haven't adjusted anything. Again, we've got a perfect stitch, but look at the amount of stretch I have in it. Now, if I did that with a straight stitch on a sewing machine, if I seamed this fabric, that I would have popped the seam by just simply pulling that. But the overlock stitch has a great deal of stretch and it will come around that side. Um, now, you'll also notice that, and this introduces the differential feed, this is kind of, because it's a stretch fabric, it's kind of been um, stretched a little bit during the sewing process. Because remember, you've got the presser foot pressure pushing down on the fabric and the fabric will stretch a little bit. So 
Let's have a talk about differential feed for a moment. And most overlockers now have differential feed, but very few people know what it actually does. So let me quickly show you. Camera guy is going to need to zoom in here. I'm going to lift this presser foot a minute, drag that thread out the way. In fact, the, the presser feet pop off. So if I take that foot off, it might even be easier to see. So we just pop that off at the back, drag that away. And you can see here, there are two sets of feed teeth. There's your front feeders and there's your back feeders back here. And they're independent. So when we turn our differential feed onto a positive number, and I'll just quickly turn this around for a moment again. I'm making camera guy work for his money today. So um, it's on neutral or normal, I call it neutral. And at neutral, it means that the both sets of feeders are feeding at the same rate. So they, they're both doing the same sort of feed motion. If I take this up to a positive number, 1.5 or even 2, let's go to 2 as an extreme and we'll pull this back around. What happens now is the front feed teeth is actually now moving more or feeding more fabric into the machine than the back feed teeth um, set is actually moving out. So we're kind of pulling the fabric in while it's being sewn. So let's have a look and see what actually happens there. And I'll just pop this foot back on. Now I'm not sitting directly in front of the machine, so it's a little bit hard. I just got to get that little spring up over there. Sorry if my hand got in the way there. We'll lift that foot up again, drop it down, keep my hand out the way here. Because you don't need to do this when you're adjusting it. I was only doing that to show you the feed teeth and that's now locked back into place. So let me run this bit of stretch fabric back in with the differential feed set all the way up to two. And, um, and you'll see it's actually now puckering the fabric in. So it's actually, it's actually now gone the other way. So you can see it's given it a, a, it's actually pulled it in, it's puckered. Now, of course we don't want that, but the reason I put that to two was to show you that's what differential feed does. If you go to a higher number, it pulls more fabric in than it pushes out. By contrast, if we go to a lower number, so I'm gonna take this all the way down to the lowest number, which is 0.7, and then run that through again. And this, it's actually fluted it out even further. So we've stretched the fabric. In other words, less fabric going in, more fabric going out has stretched the fabric. So. With that in mind, you can now imagine differential feed is all about taking those fabrics that are uh, a little bit unruly, uncontrollable, and adjusting it to, to get that perfect output. And it's, it's really quite simple, and there's loads of videos on differential feed. Most machines have it. I will tell you, certainly in the, in the lower end of the overlock market, some don't work as well as they should. I've seen that many, many times. You've got full control on this machine. And when you make an adjustment on the stitch length or the um, or the differential feed, it will actually work for you. So that, that's a big advantage. Remember, the differential feed dial on the 104 model is on the side of the machine down here, not on the side over here. So it's a, 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 just a little bit easier on this right side. So that's, that's easy. Now, of course, the other thing is people say, well, can I use overlockers on heavy fabric? Well, absolutely, yes, you can. So, so this is a pretty heavy, um, cotton drill, uh, it, it's it's actually like a work work fabric, you know, so, sort of for workwear, that type of thing. And um, and it will equally give you a good seam strength. So let's just run that through. I'm gonna go back to my normal setting. And now you can hear it's working a bit harder, but it'll handle that in a breeze. And so we've got a great seam strength there. And um, you know, you could, you could actually double that. that. Now, this is getting pretty thick. And you'll hear the machine working, but it will handle it. It will cut it. So that's four layers of a very thick, heavy cotton drill. And um, that's as strong as you're going to get. Handled it beautifully. Now, by contrast, I'm going to show you from that, without adjusting anything, down to a very fine fabric. Let me grab it. So I've got this uh, old scarf that we uh, had lying around and someone's cut it up a little bit, but it's a really, really delicate um, nylon or polyester type fabric. You can see it is as light as it gets. And I'm just going to 
Well, imagine we were just seaming up a piece of this for some reason. Now, you probably wouldn't do this with a four-thread overlocker, but I'm, it's really to show you that you can go from that heavy piece of cotton drill that I had there without doing anything more. And I'm just going to run down this section here. Again, really light, so I'm just going to lift that foot and just put that under there to start with. And, whoops, get that over here. Whoops. So we've gone from a, a like a crazy heavy cotton drill to two layers of this um, chiffon or whatever it is. Um, and it's just a perfect stitch. Now, I don't know, camera guy might be able to see that. Let me get that under here. Because it's so fine, I would want to make my stitch width a little bit wider there so I've got more fabric in the stitch. So that's where I can come down to my cutting blade width. And it goes right down from one all the way up to three. Now those that's just a scale. It doesn't mean necessarily anything other than three is the largest. Now that's widened the knife out. So I'm going to have more fabric in the stitch. So if I run this through again now, and let's just... God, it's so difficult to handle this stuff. I'd hate to be making something out of it, but then I'm not a sewer like most of you guys are, so... So yeah, so you can see we've got more fabric in the stitch there now. now on woven fabrics, particularly lightweight fabrics, a little bit more fabric in the stitch means there's less likely of the stitches to pull out of the, the weave of the fabric. So that's always a good little tip. But I reckon that's amazing. You know, you're going from this heavy drill. We've done um, a couple of layers of fleecy. We've done a knit fabric. We've done a woven fabric. We're now on this really light voile or whatever it is. Um, and you're just getting perfect stitches. I haven't adjusted tension at all, folks. So. In, in a good quality machine like a Juki, they just work and um, you know you don't have to fiddle around with things. But remember the important thing, good quality thread, good machine, good needles. And by the way, these take the standard flat back needles, so your 705 um, style needles which is what you're using on your sewing machine. So um, really, really simple. I did mention that uh, rolled hemming and I'm because that's the, probably the most popular or common um, special effect that people like to do on an overlocker. So I'm going to quickly show you how easy that is to do. Let's just move that out the way. We'll turn this around and you'll need your little screwdriver for adjusting your or taking your needles out because rolled hemming what we do is we use the right hand needle. So in order to do a rolled hem I just want to trim off the left hand needle. So take the, turn the machine so the, the, the hand wheel on the machine so the needles are up in the top position. I'm just going to trim away the left hand thread and we are now going to take the left needle out. So we just simply undo the left screw and take that needle out. Put it aside because we can put that back in and use it again later. Now if you're going to be doing a lot of rolled hemming and you've, you're leaving the left needle out for a while it's a good idea just gently, don't over tighten this, just gently tighten that left screw that you undid so it doesn't vibrate out of the machine. Don't over tighten it though, just tiniest little nip of, nip of tension there to stop it from vibrating loose. So we have the, um, the right needle is in. We now want to set it for rolled hemming and it's really simple. We just pull this lever back towards you. That's the rolled hem lever. We want to take the upper loop attention up to around about, uh, the lower loop attention rather, sorry, my bad. Um, take that to seven and we want the upper loop attention to be probably closer to three. And the other most important feature is we need the stitch length to be down close to one. Now I go usually to the, the bottom of that little gray scale there. And the first piece I'm going to do as a rolled hem is just a bit of this standard woven just to check that I've got everything right. Now it is also a good idea, grab your tweezers and take the thread that we just trimmed which is the left needle and I usually just cut it back to here so it's not going to get in the way and I'll move all that junky stuff I got right there. Um, we're all set to go. Whenever I'm doing something like this a little tip is I like to put my fabric just under the stitching, turn the wheel a couple of times just to make sure that you know I haven't done anything silly and every, all the threads working well and now we can start sewing.
and now I'm not using a, a, a bolt nylon thread which gives us that lovely coverage. I've just got your standard polyester overlocking thread on there. But that rolled hem gives you that lovely fine little delicate hem there. And really I should put a bulk nylon thread to get the best result. But what I want to do is actually go back to a bit of this really fine fabric that I've got here because this is likely the, the sort of thing you're going to do a rolled hem on. Now, because we're doing a really fine um, stitch, I generally will cut that thread there. I don't want to be um, pulling too much of that out. So let's see how we go here. I'm just going to tuck that, uh, that in there. And we'll just make sure that that's all stitching away there. And so you can see here, if camera guy can see that, we've got this lovely delicate rolled hem going here. Again, normally you will use a bulked thread or a woolly nylon or a stretched nylon thread um, on your upper looper and that'll give you that lovely glossy looking feel. And we've got videos on that anyway. But that the point here is that's all you need to do to change to a rolled hem. It's really simple. To go back to normal sewing, we'll just run that back out. And I'll just trim that away. So to go back to normal overlocking, we just take that needle that we took out, pop it back in the machine. I'll just loosen that screw off. Remember I suggested just nipping that up a little bit, so loosen it back off a little bit. The flat of the needle always goes to the back. And we just pop that in there. Now there is a little needle threader, um, a, a needle holder that comes with the machine too. I probably get used to not using those things, but there is a needle holder that is standard in the kit. Makes it a wee bit easier. Make sure that's nice and firm. Grab the thread that we trimmed off back here. Remember, lift the presser foot when you're threading. It's always the best thing. So grab that thread. It's the yellow thread. You just follow up to the yellow dot just there. Pull it down there. Pop it back into the guide there, into the little pigtail there. And we'll just trim that. And um, hopefully you'll be able to uh, see the needle eye. There is no automatic needle threader on this one, but you know, if you've never had that, you won't miss it. There we go, and I'm kind of not sitting in front of the machine properly, but that's our needle threaded. Now again, uh, little tip, I've re-threaded something. Pop a piece of fabric directly under the foot. I'm just gonna take my stitch length back to our normal position and turn the wheel Oh, and I've got to push my rolled hem finger back in. So we just push that back. We don't want that engaged. And get our tensions back to four. And there we go. We're back to normal overlocking. We've got a perfect stitch. And it's that simple. So look, that's a bit of a run through on the Juki. And um, you also do have foot pressure adjustment here too, which is kind of handy. But uh, honestly, if you're looking for an overlocker, that is just a, an absolute true work, workhorse of a machine that's going to last you years, is quiet, is smooth, is not going to bounce around the table. You just know it's going to work every time you go to it. You can't go past either the 104 or the 114 from Juki. Um, just terrific product, terrific company, and um, just, yeah, you'll, you'll enjoy it without question. And uh, we're, we're here to help you and support you if you have any questions. And again, video content, amazing. Hope so much of it. So I hope that's been helpful for you. Please contact us if you have any questions about overlockers in general or, or these specific models or anything to do with sewing for that matter. And um, until next time, happy sewing. Cheers.